a uh, good morning everyone and uh, my next video is about uh, the poem tiger and the deer which comes under the same series of indian writing in english so tiger and the deer is a beautiful poem by sir arvin logosh a versatile genius and an intellectual giant it is one of the early lyrical poems composed by sir arvin do in free quantity of verse through powerful language and imagery the poet conjures up a uh, vision the cruel sinister grandeur of the forest crouching slouching pouncing and slaying the de uh, delicate beauty of the woods the glinting eyes the powerful chest and the soft soundless pass of the tiger together convey an awesome aspect even the wind which is naturally powerful and free is frightened of the tiger who is a picture of brilliant splendor sublimity it murder and of making the leaves rustle it sneaks through them peering and its voice footsteps may disturb the pitiless splendor it is hardly dared to breathe says the poet so but thoroughly unmindful of anyone or anything the tiger keeps crouching and creeping preparing for a final fatal pounce upon the unsuspecting innocent deer so this poem is totally based on the tiger and the deer so which which is drinking water from the pool in the cool uh, confronting shades of the forest as the gentle creature falls and bra breathes his last he remembers his mate left alone defenseless defenseless in the dense forest such tender feelings are beyond the pale of the ferocious tiger this mild harmless beauty is destroyed by the strong crude beauty uh in the nature but the boy does not despair at the sight of such ferocity and cruelty the last part of the poem ends on a note of optimism and prophecy uh this urban though that a day may yet come when the tiger will no more crouch and creep in the dangerous heart of the forest just like the mammoth being extinct no more attacks the plains of asia he is clearly indicating the imperial british rule in india and other forest deer shall drink water in the woodland pool in a perfect safety and contentment the powerful ones will cause their own uh, downfall the victims of today shall uh, outlive their victors these lines carry a suggestion that, that terror will be replaced by beauty and death by life the entire poem is a vivid painting in the words of the strong tiger's cruel killing of soft and weak deer the dramatic prose and posture all movement and even each footsteps of the tiger are living to our eyes in the rhythmic expressions the two pictures of brutality and vulner vulnerability are effectively contrasted the local locality chosen to represent the two animals is significant is a natural habit the movement of the ferocious bear uh described with the ab words and phrases bear testimony to sarbindo's command of the english language as well as his keen imaginative observation of nature and her creatures he has seldom drawn such a ter terrestrial picture in the uh words as in highly realistic form the poem also illustrate the theory of quantitative verses which is left to find out own line by rhythm and unity the tiger and the deer is a metaphysical lyric of great significance and may be classed with some of its uh, mythical poems like thought in parakli uh, parakli it projects the bright and burning terror of the forest namely the tiger which inflicts unprovoked disaster and suffering to peace and innocence that is the deer the poem could not be inter uh, interpreted as a symbolic expression of the modern craze of the power and dominance over the under under rocks and down trodden of the predominance of the tasmanian based on such an interpretation the prophecy continued in the last lines of the poem indicating the transformation of the souls leading to the divination of the entire earth before becoming stepped into the yoga and mystic 
uh, mysticism, Sir Aurobindo had a short spell of the political activities through which he tried to free Mother India from the shackles of the mighty British. The given poem is a, a product of such zeal as political pa patriotic ideas and feelings. The prophecy embodied in the last two lines was only a common expression of the hopes and aspirations of every Indian poet. Thank you.